The United States is a relatively young country, but much of its culture is drawn from older nations. This is evident in its folklore, with myths and legends very similar to those in Europe. But some American legends are entirely unique, leading many to believe they have a real-life origin. Today we look only at the darkest of such legends, from strange monstrous creatures to things that should be impossible. In 1944, a strange figure began to terrorise the small town of Mattoon. Tall and unusually thin, the man dressed in all black and prowled the streets at night, holding a large flit gun. On choosing his victim, he would pump some kind of toxic gas into their home, before disappearing into the night. Dozens of people reported being attacked by the mad gasser, awakening at night to a strange smell. Some were unable to move, as if paralysed by the gas, but others were able to reach a window, from which they witnessed their attacker escape. Before long, locals took to patrolling the streets at night, and the mad gasser was never seen again. Eighteen hundreds New York was a very dangerous place, with all kinds of criminals out on the street, but none were more notorious than Ludwig the Bloodsucker. Short and stocky, he was incredibly hairy, large bristles visible from his ears and nose. But despite his appearance, Ludwig was not entirely human. Every night he preyed on drunken locals, waiting outside bars to lure his chosen victims somewhere quiet. When hidden, he would cut their throat, and drink their blood as if it were wine. On the banks of Utah Lake, there once lived a small native community, but long ago a severe famine almost caused their extinction. There was simply not enough food to go around, and so a group decision was made to kill any newborn baby. Following years would see dozens of babies thrown into the lake for a quick death. In time, the famine passed, and the baby's sacrifice paid off. But eventually, the sound of crying children began to be heard in the distance, as if emitting from the lake. Soon the long dead babies were even seen emerging from its waters, leaving footprints still visible now. One dark evening decades ago, a young couple were driving through a small forest road. Surrounded by woodland, they heard a loud scream nearby, as if somebody was in trouble. Pulling over, the man got out and ran over to help, disappearing into the trees. Now alone in the car, his date simply waited for his return, but she had no watch, and it seems to go on for ages. Turning on the radio, she heard an emergency report that a lunatic had escaped from a nearby insane asylum. He was an especially violent man, with a hook for a hand, and no one knew where he was. The moment that news report ended, she noticed a loud thudding noise on the car roof, and so she leaned out of the window, looking up to see a naked, hook-handed man holding the severed head of her boyfriend. In rural Virginia, there once lived an old man and his dog. Waking up in the middle of the night, he saw a strange creature watching him. A little bigger than his dog, the creature had thick brown fur, pointed ears, and bright red eyes. Terrified, he slashed at it with a knife, cutting off its tail, and sending it running out of his cabin. Still hearing it scream in the distance, he cooked up and ate the tail, unable to turn down a free meal. Then the next night, he heard loud scratching on the outside of his cabin, and a deep demonic voice. For hours he heard the same sentence repeated, Give me back my tail. Night after night he would be kept awake by this, until one day he stepped outside to confront it, and was never seen again. In 1887, two Michigan lumberjacks encountered a monstrous creature deep in the woods. Seven feet tall, it was like a man-dog hybrid, with the body of a human and a canine head. 
This was just the first of many encounters with the Michigan Dogman. Every 10 years, the creature re-emerges, prowling rural Michigan on the seventh year of each decade. At night, it lets out a loud hysterical howl, scaring all animals away from its general area. Then, without competition from other predators, it will stalk any human it sees. In 1887, a small newspaper in northern Vermont published a bizarre story. It told of a poor family struggling to survive the oncoming winter. High in the mountains, and with little supplies, they decided to freeze their bodies until spring. Through some kind of folk magic, family members were frozen solid, to hibernate while the land around them was covered in snow. Only in spring did they begin to thaw and reawaken, as the climate heated up. The story was printed as factual in a newspaper called the Montpelier Argus and Patriot, leading many to believe it. In the California town of Ojai, there was once a terrible wildfire. Devastating the town, a father and son were trapped inside their cabin. Only the son survived, though severely burned, and driven mad by what happened. With a knife, he removed the burnt flesh from his father, hoping that would save him. By the time authorities arrived, the son was gone, and the father horribly mutilated. Since that day, his location has been a mystery, but many claim he is still out there, hiding in the woods and murdering any who see him. In 1925, the famous sculptor Felix Agnes died, over his grave was placed an eerie statue, now known as Black Aggie. In short time, all kinds of dark rumours were told about Black Aggie. According to them, its eyes glow bright red on certain dark nights, and if you look directly into them, you will be blinded. Pregnant women who approach the statue will miscarry, and anyone to touch it is risking their death. Some even said ghosts from other graves would emerge on dark nights, and gather around Black Aggie for some kind of ritual. In 1701, Fort Detroit was founded by the French explorer Anthony Lomay, but shortly before he met with a fortune teller, who warned him of a strange red dwarf. The dwarf was a shy but powerful being, occupying the woods near Fort Detroit, she warned him never to insult or offend it, but that was easier said than done. When the dwarf eventually revealed itself to him, Lomay was scared, and struck it with his cane. He would never see the dwarf again, but from that day, both he and the settlement of Detroit were cursed. So that brings us to the end of this video. If you wish to support my channel, consider leaving a like, comment, or even sharing to social media. All those things help a lot, 